Hello baseball fans, Steve here with another tabletop baseball video. Uh, this is the second one I'm recording today. Um, with my wife being out of town, uh, it gives me a little more flexibility as to what I do and when. So uh, I'm going to be traveling here uh, off and on for the next month. And so um, I do have a few uh, videos that are, are in, the, in the works, um, primarily a couple of uh, unboxing videos. Uh, so stay tuned for those. But today I wanted to talk about the topic of measuring accuracy in baseball sims. If you've watched my channel, you've, you've seen me talk about accuracy in the past. Uh, you know, I'm very much into the math behind the baseball sims. Uh, and I've reverse engineered a lot of sims. And so, um, you know, I thought I'd address this uh, topic briefly. Hopefully this will be a, a, a shorter video than most of mine. Appreciate uh, all of you who... Uh, follow the channel and, and, and listen to all my content. It's much appreciated. And uh, comments are, are very welcome and actually in, encouraged. So um, with that, we're gonna get started. So uh, I'm gonna provide a little context here, but I have a, um, a slide representing a topic I find to be very interesting. Um, and I call it unlikely home runs, but what you see in the background here is Dave McNally hit a grand slam in the 1970 World Series. And um, so, I mean, pitchers hit back then and, and some of them knew how to hit. So uh, maybe it's a question of how unlikely it really was. I think the Orioles also had another grand slam in that postseason by a pitcher as well. And then, of course, another favorite I have, which is uh, after... Um, Several hundred plate appearances, Bartolo Colon hit a hit a home run uh, when he was playing for the Mets as well. So, fun stuff. Um, this, this is being recorded in April 2023. This is uh, from a box score um, from early this season. The Los Angeles Dodgers played a game and they gave up... Uh, Actually, only six runs, interestingly enough, on eight hits, but 14 walks. And so I made a post in one of the tabletop baseball uh, Facebook groups, and I said, you know, if you saw this and it came from a sim, you would say, well, the sim's not accurate. So um, just some perspective or food for thought. So let's start out with some definitions. I've talked a lot about what do we mean by accuracy. Relative accuracy is just making sure that the good players are, 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 are carded better than, than the average players who are carded better than the poor players. Uh, in some respects, that's equally important as what I call absolute accuracy, where you're trying to uh, card the players to some uh, performance measure, typically the actual stats that they had in the season. And then uh, a lot of these discussions lead to something that's probably most important, which is, you know, is, is the gameplay realistic and is it plausible? Uh, does it produce plausible results? Um, you know, I think when you're, def when you're assessing the accuracy of a sim, uh, you can do it at a macro level. You know, you can see, well, you know, did the team produce the same wins and losses that it had in, in real life, or, or did it produce the wins and losses that the Pythagorean theorem, based on runs scored and runs allowed, uh, would have said, um, you know, and, and were the team stats accurate or, or close to, to real life? And I'm talking about totals like runs scored or runs allowed, ERA, batting average, and so on. Um, but you can also do what I call a micro-assessment which obviously is uh, individual player performance. And that can be their batting average, slugging percentage, OPS statistics. Um, you know, for pitchers, it could be ERA or whip or batting average against or home runs allowed uh, and so on. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people like to look at the individual player results as do I and people um, who do uh, especially do replays keep keep stats on their on their players so 
it, it's, um, I think it's something of interest uh, to, to tabletop gamers. So I'm going to start out being a little facetious here, but I've summarized uh, the assessment methodologies that you can use to assess accuracy in four major buckets. The first one is to play a few games with a sim and then make a declaration about whether it's accurate or not. Um, I, I am being facetious, although um, more often than not, you will see some of this uh, on the forums online. And, you know, it, it is what it is. It's human nature. Um, but I, I think it provides good context to, to the rest of these. So I think the second one that we see a lot, and, and we're all interested in this, is there's a lot of people who do full as-played replays using you know the starting lineups and the pitching rotations and, and maybe even the substitutions that occurred uh, in, in, in the real, real life. Uh, these have, I think, two major issues. That one is that even with the, the real lineups, that there's a lot of variability or variables that can come in and affect the replay results. Um, and one is, you know, your managing style. Um, you know, I think as soon as you have one plate appearance, all of a sudden the context of the game changes. And so, uh, you know, are you really doing a real replay or not? Uh, you know, and, and so on. So that's, that's one thing that we're all familiar with. I think the other thing is that even playing a full season um, really really isn't enough to get a true uh, statistical outcome uh, be, you know, from a replay. And I'll, I'll talk at the very end briefly about some of my other videos where I, I talk about this and I think it's worthwhile. I'll put these links in the description to these other videos. I think a big one that, that can be used and it's very important is simulations, computerized simulations where you can enter the game engine design into a, into a computer model, enter the player um, card information into a computer model and uh, run simulations. Sometimes they're called Monte Carlo simulations, but they're basically thousands, if not tens of thousands of simulated plate appearances and you accumulate the stats and see what they tell you. And you can do this broadly, you know, have a whole league replay a season multiple times, or you can do this for individual matchups. And, and I've done this uh, for individual matchups um, in, in basically in Excel spreadsheets. Um, not quite as sophisticated as some other simulation methods, but I've done this. Um, but I, in doing that, I, I came to a realization uh, as I was analyzing certain sims, and this is early on in my two-year journey here, that for many sims, you don't have to do simulations. You can just take two player cards and match them up against each other. And, and let's say in a simple example, a 50-50 game like Strat, you can take a player card and assume that it's used 50% of the time, and you can take another player card Assume that's used 50% of the time. Summarize all of the statistical outcomes from those two cards, average them together, and you'll figure out what that matchup produces. And then you can make a decision as to whether you think it's, it's um, you know, valid or an accurate sim. So in the Stratomatic Card Viewer app, they actually have a, a tool where you can match up two players against each other. So I, I averaged together or matched up Aaron Judge 2022 and Edwin Diaz, 2022, and Aaron Judge, as we know, hit a lot of home runs that year, but he had a um, 311 batting average, a 686 slugging percentage. Um, Edwin Diaz, he struck out about half the batters he faced, if I remember right, uh, did, therefore didn't allow a lot of hits, so his whip is well below one, quite quite incredible and a low ERA, but you average them together and you can see, um, you know, what the results are going to be. And these color codes mean something, but I, I can't tell you exactly what they are. I think, I think the green obviously are, are hits, but, um, you can see when you blend them together, um, 
the expected outcome over a long period of time, or yeah, over a long period of time, I guess I'll say, would be a 243 batting average and a 511 slugging percentage, which of course is lower than than the um, 686. I don't know what Edwin Diaz's slugging percentage against was, but my guess is it was lower than than if he faced Aaron Judge all the time. But anyway, that's that's a methodology that I call the matchup methodology. And where I've used that in my reverse engineering work of these vintage sims is I will create or find a league average pitcher or batter, and then I will take a card uh, or chart for a player and compute the expected outcome and see if it is close to what their real life performance was. And uh, this is a good way for me just to check whether my math and my logic and my formulas uh, make sense or not. It's also a way for certain sims where I couldn't directly reverse engineer them like uh, Grand Slam. It's just a way for me to get a sense whether the, um, whether the sim was, you know, the original sim was, was accurate. Uh, and, um, and what I'm talking about here, when I'm talking about expected outcomes, I'm mostly focused on um, the batter pitcher interaction and the resulting stats like batting average, slugging percentage, strikeouts, home runs allowed, um, things like that. Uh, I, I really don't use much of this type of analysis for solo bases or whatever. The best approach that I saw was, was by a guy who was looking at payoff pitch. And I probably won't pronounce his name right. I will try two different ways. Uh, his name is Ron Bernier, or if it sounds French to me, and so maybe it's Bernier. Who knows? Uh, but in any event, he kind of does this expected outcome approach. But for payoff pitch, what he did is he took Carlos Stremski maybe 1967, and he, he did a, an expected outcome calculation for every plate appearance that he had and every pitcher he faced in that plate appearance. And he summed up the results of those expected outcomes and compared them to his real life season stats, and they were quite close. And I would say close enough to probably declare that payoff pitch is reasonably accurate. Um, and so I thought that was very interesting and, and I, I very much can be on board with, with that, ex that approach. But I think taking a big step back, either multiple uh, tens of thousands of simulation results or some type of expected outcome math, I think are the two best ways to assess the accuracy of a sim. Um, I'm just gonna wrap up here. This will be in the description, but I did a few, a few videos that are related to this topic. One just talks about how there's so much natural variability, uh, statistical variability, when you're playing a game that even one full season probably isn't enough to assess the accuracy of a sim. Um, I did some of this expected outcome math on uh, a Jim Palmer a Sports Illustrated um, baseball um, game. And, um, and then I did uh, my own payoff pitch analysis as well. And, um, and then if you're interested, you can check out my, my channel, which is listed below here. But I've done a lot of reverse engineering videos, and you can kind of get a feel for how I went about uh, uh, reverse engineering the, the, the sims, but also then how I went about uh, doing, doing my testing, which was mostly an, an expected outcome approach. As always, uh, please comment, uh, like, and subscribe. It's really up to you. That's really not what I'm here for. It's really here, I think, to learn and, and, and teach. So hopefully you found this useful. Um, since we're almost at 15 minutes, I'm going to stop now. Thanks for listening. Bye.